So what's the new plan? What's the new layout? Well, this is our master bedroom. Okay. Right here, we're gonna put a closet, and then this. Right here, yeah. Yeah, and then this will become our master bath. Okay, what's the we'll layout? Put a vanity here. Yeah. A toilet back here, and then this will be the shower. Well, that is a big job. It is. I'm not sure we can get that done today. <laughs> well, what we really need your help with is the rough plumbing below the floor. Okay. So that we can probably get done in a day, but it still it needs to have a licensed plumber and a local code, so I'm gonna get some local help. Sounds great. Well, Jeremiah, there's nothing rough about rough plumbing. We really have to get the pipes in the perfect location before we bury it in concrete. These plates are really helpful. Why don't you take me through the layout here? Well, what we've got here is the back wall of our bathroom. On that wall, we have two fixtures. In this area, we're going with a 48 inch by 48 inch shower. That's a good size shower. It's a very good size shower. And it opens from this side. Yes, sir, you're walking okay. into it that way. All right. And our drain is gonna be 24 inches off of this plate. All right, by 24 inches, so the trap right. opening has to be exactly right there. Absolutely. All right. And then we have a five inch wall separating the two fixtures, yep. which creates our space for our toilet. All right, so the standard toilet in America is called a 12 inch rough. It wants to be 12 inches off the finished wall. We have to allow for sheetrock, add a half an inch, so it wants to be 12 and a half inches to center. So we have to break this away for our new drain right here. We also want to have at least 30 inches side to side on a toilet. And what do we got here? We got like 32, more than 30, almost 33. So that's great. There's enough space uh, to fit. Absolutely. All right, so we have to expose this old drain pipe right here. We have to trench over to the new shower, trench over to the vanity. This is a, bit, a little bit of digging to do. Here's your shovel. You better get started. All right, I'll start from this end. All right, so we've exposed the old, what they call the closet bin. That's where the toilet sat right here. You can see the branch right here that went to the shower, and this is the drain for the lavatory. Now, this pipe is probably 80 years old. You can see the evidence of the old cast iron connection that was called bell and spigot. This is filled with lead right here. We don't want to disrupt this. If we do, it means we now have to dig outside and tie onto the pipe way out there, and that's not good. We're going to try to cut this right here behind the knuckle, and hopefully there's enough material right here that's good we can tie onto. Now, we can't just use a regular metal blade because this is cast iron. So we'll use a grinding wheel with a diamond blade. Okay. Right, let's pull that right out of there. Let's see how we did. Oh, there's the old drain from the shower. Oh my goodness, that's great. Plenty of meat there. I'm so glad we didn't have to dig up the whole backyard. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, to tie onto our old cast iron pipe, we're gonna use this. This is a flexible mechanical coupling. It has a couple of stainless steel hose clamps right here. And this will transition from the four inch cast iron here to the three inch PVC right here. Why don't you glue that into our wire fitting drum? Right? All right, let's put it on. And now to tighten it up, I'm gonna use this. This is a special torque wrench. That allows me to tighten those clamps up without over tightening it and stripping it. So we need to be sure that this elbow, this closet bend is exactly right. So you remember, here's the center line. We want to be 12 and a half inches off the rough, so it wants to be right there. Just hold your piece in where it should go. And this is the important measurement right here. That's 16, good. Why don't you cut that one for me? It's always good practice to deburr the end of the pipe and to actually ream the inside to make sure it's as smooth as possible in there. Good. All right, let's put it into place. Push, push. Wow, 12 and a half, just like we planned. All right, tighten that up, okay?
Okay, so let's just check our measures. Perfect. And perfect. Okay, so that is our rough for the toilet. Now we have to do our branches, our two inch to the shower and over to the lavatory. Well, you got the beginnings of a bathroom down yes, here, Claire. Yes, we do. Let me get you up to speed. Here's that old cast iron line we tied onto it. Here is the three inch drain line for our toilet right here. You can see this branch right here going over to the shower stall with a trap right there. So what is that trap for? Well, any plumbing fixture has to have a trap. They're filled with water, and that's important to keep sewer gas from coming up inside the building and making a smell. Sounds good. Toilet has one built in. There'll be one under the shower stall and one under the vanity. All right? So now our drain lines go to the shower. We, have a, we come over here to our lavatory, but any plumbing fixture has to have a trap, but it also has to be vented. So what does the venting do? Well. Venting is really important. If we're going to have water go down a pipe, we have to have air coming in behind it to relieve it so it'll go down smoothly. Otherwise, you're going to have gurgle or all kinds of noises. So in the old days, we might have to individually vent everything. So in a case like this, the toilet might have needed a three, and a half, three by inch and a half Y fitting with a small vent pipe over here. Another Y right here coming off the side. Those vent pipe would come here together. Another one from the vanity. And now it comes together and goes up through the house and ties into the stack that goes out through the roof. Okay. But local code nowadays lets us do a thing called a wet vent. A wet vent means that we upsize this pipe right here to two inch. And now this pipe, which is normally just the drain for the lavatory, also acts as the vent for the shower and the toilet. So now instead of having three individual small pipes, we have one vent right here for the whole plumbing group. And that really saves time and money. So now, we got everything dry fit, we just need to glue it all together. So we have worked really hard to get these pipes in the perfect location and to have pitch, about an eighth of an inch per foot so the water drains properly. But we want to make sure they stay there. So Jeremiah used this metal rebar, drove it down next to the trap and in all the locations, and taped it. So when the concrete guys come in, it's not going to knock the pipes out of place. Now, inspector's going to come tomorrow, and then we're ready for concrete. Great. Before the concrete gets here, though, what we want to do is install a foam cap over the toilet drain and also put some plastic around the shower drain. That way we can keep the concrete off the pipe so when we come back to set the fixtures, we don't have to worry about chipping that concrete away from the pipe. That's a great tip. Thank you.